What's up everyone, my name is Jesus Quesadilla, and welcome to the third episode of Let's Play Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories. In the last episode, our character Vic Vance was discharged dishonorably from the military, and so now we're here today working for Phil Cassidy. Uh, last time we did uh, the first mission for him, and we're going to pick up right now with Boomshine Blowout. Phil! What's going on? You're a mess. I'm not drunk. I'm just resting my eyes. It just wouldn't be okay. a day as Phil Cassidy if you so weren't drunk off your ass on? within the first five minutes of the day. My boom shines. Uh, about to get blown sky high by a bunch of angry scumbags. Now I really wonder why anybody would possibly want to do that to you. Them cholos are gonna blow up my liquor. What the hell is a cholo? And there's so much of it at the warehouse. One match will blow it all the way to Tennessee. Tennessee, well, that doesn't really seem like the type of thing you want to keep at a warehouse, but okay. The thing is, Vicky boy, my daddy was an angry man. He never ever told me I was special. In fact, he used to beat me. Oh, well, Phil, you're very special. Staring at my cousin or my sister. You know what he said to me? He said I'd be better off dead. Do I look like Dr. Phil to you? And how exactly is this helping? Uh, the tragedy of it is, I'm just like you. I am a drunk. The apple doesn't it's, fall far from the tree, I guess. I deserve to die. It should have been me instead of Zach on Hill 491, man. I'm coming home, daddy! <laughs> yeah, daddy, I'm... Come it on! You're pathetic. Okay, we're going to help you out, Phil, but you are not driving this time. We all know how that ends. All right, so we got to get Phil and his drunk ass on over to his warehouse before, I guess, uh, the Cholos blow it up. So let's race on down that way. But I hope that you guys are all faring very well this day. This fine, lovely day. It's actually not that fine and lovely here. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that in the background, but uh, it's storming pretty loud outside. I'm hoping it doesn't pick up too much of the rain, but uh, there was some thunder going on earlier, and that was really scaring the crap out of my dogs. It's, I don't know. Things are a little bit crazy here in my neck of the woods. I hope it starts to settle down. But until then, I figure I'd just kick back, play some Vice City stories for y'all. So, okay, let's go ahead and turn on in here. And if I am remembering correctly, and there is a good chance that I don't, but if I am remembering correctly, um, I believe this is a somewhat annoying mission. I think the first time I played this on the PSP, I failed it a great many times just because the controls for this particular part of the game are a little difficult. Anyway, let me grab this armor pickup. I uh, remembered this armor location from playing Vice City, and it's still here in Vice City Stories, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to pick that up. Uh, you don't really need it for this mission, in particular. You don't do any on-foot segments, so it's not really all that necessary. But, uh, I figured I'd grab it now anyway, so I don't have to stop and get it later. And that way you guys can see where it is, too. Alrighty, so, let's see. Everything looks normal right now, maybe we beat them here. Don't really want them to blow up all his boom shine. The whole city is gonna burn down. I could've sworn I locked this place up. Oh no. Phil, don't open the... Daddy! <laughs> daddy, daddy, daddy! It's like that episode of Aquatine Skinny Hunger Force. Total bastard body trap my place. Ain't no use running. When that boom shine blows, we're all gonna die. Get a grip! Well, I think that's a I'll little bit excessive, liquor. but okay. I'll back the truck up to the door. You load her up. Uh, okay, why do I have to be one in the danger zone? Okay. Whatever. Okay, let's go ahead and hop on this thing, and yeah, it's our old friend the forklift. We remember good times, good times back in San Andreas. Oh, not a fan of the forklift, not so much. Um, in this game, it controls mostly the same, which is to say that it controls absolutely horrendously. The uh, turning on this thing is just atrocious, and yeah, not the best vehicle to navigate with. But so we have, I believe, four boxes of boom shine that we need to load up into the back of Phil's truck before that heat meter fills all the way up. If we fail, then, well, the entire place gets blown to hell and we die. So that would be nice to avoid. 
Oh yeah, this is the part that makes it difficult. So, in between grabbing each of the boxes, some debris is going to fall on the ground. It makes it a little bit tougher to navigate. You're going to have to take a little more roundabout way to get to the rest of the boomshine every time that happens. Um, one trick I like to use just to expedite things ever so slightly, and trust me, you're going to want to shave off as many seconds as you possibly can. Um, one trick I use is... You notice you have to lower and raise the forklift, the, uh, oh, I call them the forks, but the, the thing that you're actually using to pick up the boxes with. You raise and lower that with two of the buttons on your controller, and it kind of takes a while to actually do it. So as you can see I'm doing here, I'm lowering it before I even get to the other boxes, which uh, saves you some time. And likewise, um, I start to raise the box up into the sky even before I get to Phil's truck. You know, just to save a couple extra seconds if you do that while you're driving. And, uh, oh, whoops. See, wrong turn there, and that can be costly. Um, one thing you might want to do is just memorize the layout of the warehouse, and, uh, watch a video like this one, and, uh, just see where the debris falls so you can plan your route in advance. I do not have such a luxury, unfortunately, so I'm gonna have to do this as quickly and yet as cautiously as I possibly can, which is easier said than done. Thankfully, controls on the, uh, PlayStation 3 controller I think are immensely approved over the PSP. Whoa. And just as soon as I see that, I run right into a wall. Um, yeah, you're going to want to avoid running into any fire while you're carrying a boomshine box, just because that'll uh, potentially cause you to fail the mission. But that is three down, and I believe we just have one more left to go. And uh, the heat's a little bit above more than halfway, so we're going to want to go pretty quickly here. As you can see, the entire warehouse is pretty much covered in debris, which is going to make this a lot more difficult. Um, I think we're going to want to turn left here. Don't crash. Come on, Vic, you can do this, buddy. And let's go ahead and turn left one more time, because I believe some debris fell on that other path we were using. And once we grab this and secure it... I'm trying to remember if that's mission complete or if we actually have to drive it somewhere afterwards. We may have to drive it. I'm not entirely positive. But okay, we can do this. We just have to not hit any of the flames on our way back, and I think we are pretty much golden. But yeah, one thing about this game is um, it was pretty notorious for being somewhat difficult because of the controls. Uh, we haven't gotten to too much combat in the game, but I remember on the PSP, combat was a sum of a bitch. Uh, it was pretty difficult to do just because you didn't have the benefit of an extra analog stick. Uh, the PSP only had one sort of analog thing. And so it made things a lot more difficult to control. But like I said, on the PS3, things are sort of a cinch. Makes the game a lot more playable and a lot more enjoyable, thankfully. And uh, that's everything. These babies in some safe place, huh? Yeah, sounds like a plan. Okay, that's it. So we don't have to help him drive it anywhere. I don't really feel comfortable letting Phil drive drunk with a bunch of boom shine on the back of his truck. Let's just cross our fingers and hope he doesn't crash somewhere. Anyway, we're getting another message here on our text and device. Aunt Ended says, Has your brother been in touch? He hasn't done his chores. Again. Again. Um, no, he hasn't really been in touch, but I'm kind of thankful for that because he can be a bit of a nuisance. And uh, his chores? How old is he, woman? Shouldn't be living at home anymore. All right, let's go ahead and race back on down. We can do missions for either Marty or for Phil. I think Phil only has one or two missions left. Let's go ahead and take care of the rest of Phil's stuff before we move on to anything for Marty. Haven't met him yet. He, uh, he's the uh, friend that Phil texted us about, so we'll get to him in due time. He'll be the next mission strand that we take on after we wrap up all Phil's missions. But I think we have a somewhat exciting mission for Phil coming up here, so I'd like to go ahead and do that one first. So let's just make our... Whoa, crap! Whoa, jeez! And stuck the landing. <laughs> totally planned every bit of that. Alright, let's go ahead and see what awaits us in... Whoa, jumped right over the marker. In truck stop! Sounds exciting. Oh, you, you asshole. Hey, look who it is! Victor Vance! What's going on, amigo? You want some smoke? Fuck you, Martinez. Relax. You're so fucking histrionic. It's like hanging out with a bitch on her period. You want me to fuck you up? Whatever, baby. The thing is, you work for Phil. And Phil, Phil works for me. 
which makes you my bitch's bitch. Figure that out. It's called the transitive property. <laughs> so you had better play nice if you want to get paid, huh? Because if you don't get paid, then who's going to look after your sick brother? Fuck you. <laughs> hey, change the record, baby. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. What did you expect me to do, huh? I didn't screw you over for fun. I was saving myself, and you would do the same, and don't pretend otherwise. I had a career. So what? You got kicked out of the army. Big deal. I am so looking forward to pulverizing this guy the first I chance I get. Some guns I can sell if you can get them. Hmm? Hey, Phil, don't smoke too much of this shit, huh? It'll make you trip out. Get paranoid. Sure. Later, Jerry. Come on, Vic. This just silence any asshole following me. And great, he's already paranoid. Just what I need, a drunk paranoid redneck. Alright, more babysitting to do. Backup, Vic. I know some guys that'll help. Alright, sounds good. Are they also drunk paranoid rednecks? Birds of a feather flock together, I guess. Alright, so let's go ahead and drive to the hotel. Okay. They're followed? staying in a pretty ritzy we place, I guess. Being followed. I'll rip those bastards' livers right out of their side. Chill out, man. There ain't no one following Oh, us. man, he's all paranoid. He's like the truth from San Andreas. Just can't get his mind calmed down. Thought that stuff was supposed to mellow you out, bro, not put you on, you know, on the edge of your seat. Jeez. All right, so this is the hotel in question. So let's see what his hired help looks like. Let's see if they look even halfway competent. Hopefully with another couple of goons, this will be a lot easier. Hey, fellas, come on. We're going to make some money. They're good guys, Vic. Just always so quiet. Uh, uh, maybe I shouldn't trust them. Maybe I shouldn't trust you. How about you think about that one, Phil? Okay. So we got three guns in our van. That's pretty good. So for this mission, I guess it's not really going to be too necessary for us to do any drive-bys. We'll just let these three handle it. And I think what we're going to do, we're going to go head out and steal some merchandise and get it back to Phil's place. I imagine we're probably going to have to drive it back on our own, but let's go ahead and see what happens here. So, I, I did notice, I was playing back the uh, one of the other episodes where uh, we were doing the drive-by mission with Phil. It was actually the last episode that we had, I think. Um, and I noticed, uh, drive-by damage in this game is pretty excessive. Um, I don't know if it's just that submachine guns are more powerful in this game compared to San Andreas, but I'm telling you, Phil tore through that Cholo car, and with three guys, it's just going to go even quicker, I think. So you're already dropping fools like crazy. Got one guy left on there. He's fighting a losing battle. Now he's done. Bring the truck to a break. Okay, we can do that. So let's just go ahead and get ahead of it, I assume, and stop in front of it. You, pull on over! Get out of my way. Oh my god, oh my god. Tip over, tip over, tip over, tip over. Whoo! Stuck the landing. Like I said, everything I do, I mean to do it. And, uh, did the game just glitch and create two barrack trucks? Okay, whatever. Let's go ahead and follow back Phil back. And, oh god, okay. Oh, it's gonna be one of those missions. Escort mission, I hate that. Oh my god, take him out, take him out. Thank you. Oh, I am not a fan of these types of missions. That kind of irritates me ever so slightly, but I'm sure we can do it. Incoming! Can't be that hard. We're still pretty early on in the game. So I guess just uh, kite the enemies off to the side and let your two guys take them out. That damage meter, if it fills up, we're going to fail the mission. So just, oh, don't bump into him. <laughs> you know, don't fill the damage meter ourselves now. Oh, but see, they tear through cars like like a knife through butter. That's just ridiculous. And now there's only two of our guys in the car, too. Uh, oh god, I just realized we let Phil drive. That was probably not the best idea. You think we will have learned our lesson by now? Good god. Okay, sir, it's time for you to die. Whoa, holy crap. <laughs> Kind of stop on his side. That was pretty badass. Alright, so we gotta be almost there. Maybe one or two more cars to deal with? No? Is that all of them? Because we're practically at Phil's place now, so I guess we must be in the clear. I don't see anyone else following behind us. I guess that's another thing you could do if you just look behind you the entire drive. 
Um, or as much as you can, you can tell when enemies are coming and from what angle, so you can stop them better. But uh, yeah, Phil took hardly any damage, in spite of the fact that he's running off the road seemingly every chance he gets. Really should have taken his keys. Really should have done that. Alright. Gotta be getting close, buddy. And please do not crash, Phil, please. That's the last thing I need is the AI to just fuck up on me right here at the end. I could so imagine it doing it, too. And I think we're golden. Awesome. Not that I really want to be doing work for, uh, for Jerry or anything, but I guess we gotta do what we gotta do to get money. 30 bucks? Ain't nothing too bad, I guess. And, uh, I think we're going to get another quick text here. Yep. Okay, this one is from... It's from Lance Vance! Hey, bro, Aunt Enid's driving me crazy. Yeah, you and me both. Can I join you? Let's double team that town. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. Well, if you want to get your ass out here, Lance, you're more than welcome to join me. I could use some help. But I do think that's about all the time we have here today, so thank you guys for joining me. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode as much as I have. Once again, my name is Jesus Quesadilla. If you've liked this episode, please feel free to subscribe to me. Otherwise, take care, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!